Microsoft Project 2016 Multiple Timelines Many of us have created timelines in Microsoft Project to show other people a professional-looking snapshot of what we've been up to, about how the project is going, and give them a particular view of the project that they can easily understand. Not everybody who's involved in the project is going to have the application. So, sometimes we'll need to export to a PowerPoint, or to Word, maybe print it, or even email it to somebody who's interested. To me, one of the coolest things about this is utilizing more than just one Office application. After all, it is a productivity suite. So I'll show you how we can make timelines, then use a new feature in 2016 called Multiple Timelines. We'll do a little bit of formatting, and then I'll show you how to copy it to PowerPoint so that you can present this again in a professional manner, showing a big picture. Here we have a basic customer service project. We can see Gantt chart on the bottom, and we can see a timeline on top. Sometimes we'll be in Gantt chart view, but we won't see a timeline. You may need to go to view and ensure that timeline is checked. Like I said before, I really like timelines. I think it's a nice way to show how things are spread out and show when things start, as well as when they finish. I can scroll down and I can add something else to my timeline. For example, training planning. I'm just going to right click and add this to the timeline. And in previous versions, we've only been able to see this one timeline, this one view. And like I said, I'm going to format it so it looks a little nicer. I'll click right here in the white space and timeline, and you can see a timeline tools format contextual tab. Right away, we can see some changes. We can see timeline bar as well as date range. I'll show you how we can use this feature to get rid of some of that white space, trim it up, and make it look a lot cleaner. One thing I might like to do is click here this is service planning, but I can't really see the whole thing. So I'm going to click on it, and right now it's displayed as a bar. I'll display this as a callout. I can do the same thing here. This is initial assessment. I'll click on it, and I'll display that as a callout as well. When we get to formatting, I'll show you how we can make this look a lot nicer. In this single timeline, things are stacked up, and it can get a little bit overwhelming. What I'll do is click on timeline bar. Notice when I do that, I need to pull this down but I can see add tasks with dates to the timeline. I've just inserted a new timeline bar. With this, I can very easily left click and just drag and drop these tasks down. This can very quickly get crowded. So what I'm going to do is right click, go to more views, and then I'll choose timeline. Now I have a nice clean workspace. I'll need to click on format again. I'll click on timeline bar, and again, I'm just going to drag and drop. Once you drag and drop and you get things how you want them to look, I have four different timelines. In the last few, I created a few callouts. I'm going to hover over this one and get a four-headed arrow. I'm just going to drag this down and put it right there. I also have initial assessment. This is pretty crunched up. I could drag it back onto the timeline or drag it up a little higher. So far, this is looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to use that date range feature I was talking about. I'll need to click on this timeline, for example, and I want to get rid of all of this white space. I can see that this is from 2.8 to 3.25. I'll click on date range. By default, it uses the project's start and finish dates, but I'm going to set custom dates. Again, 2.8 all the way to 3.25. I'll hover over here, and I can see this starts on 212, and this ends on 422. So I'll click here, and I'll go from 212 to 422. One more time, I'm just going to click there, go to date range, set custom dates, from 219 to 325. From here, I'll do some additional formatting. I'm going to left click and pull this down and treat it as a callout. This way, when I present, we can see all the words as well as the dates. Remember, I'm building this with a presentation in mind. I'll click here and do some quick formatting. We have a few different ways we can use this timeline to present. I'll click here on Copy Timeline, and I have one for email. This is the smallest choice. This is great to fit easily in an Outlook message. Next is Presentation. This one's designed more to work within a PowerPoint slide. 
Then we have full size. This is large. It's the same size as you see on the screen right now. I'm going to click for presentation. And nothing magical really happens until I copy it onto a PowerPoint slide. Here we have four different timelines for the same project. All of these tasks are very nicely laid out and they're formatted. In previous versions, this is what we saw. One timeline with everything all stacked up, even overlapping. Multiple timelines are the way to go. I strongly encourage you to explore Project 2016. This will show off in a very professional manner how organized your project is. And that's how to create multiple timelines in Microsoft Project 2016.